Sure, they're gonna bring out their. Is that actually water absorb? Is that actually water absorb? I thought it was Swiss swim. YouTube today we're trying out a brand new team and this team got top four at the recent Japan National Championship with Triple Dragon Salamence. That's right, Eternatus, Dialga, plus Salamence alongside Umbreon or Shifu and a really slow Whimsicott with Encore. It is a crazy team. I have no idea how it's going to go, but if you do enjoy the videos, be sure to leave a like down below, leave a comment down below, really does help me out. And if you want to check out the details of the team and the creator down below in the description alongside grab the rental code while you can, but let's get started and play some games. Kyogre, Yveltal, Incineroar, Raichu, Gardevoir, and Tornadus. Okay, a Gardevoir against... Uh, one of the problems with this team is that it has three fairy weaknesses. No fairy resistance whatsoever. So this is kind of complicated. Yveltal is also not a pretty Pokemon for my team either. Oh, there's quite a bit that could go wrong here. What do I want to bring? They have Tailwind of themselves too. I don't think it's the Scarf Yveltal, at least on the positive note, but... Uh, not exactly an amazing matchup right here. I kind of want to go maybe a Shifu lead. I mean, on the bright side, Umbreon could theoretically stall, but it's like really hard to, I think. I don't think it's a really good option. I want to bring her Shifu, but I don't think I can afford to. I just don't think a Shifu does enough. Uh, maybe it's Eternatus lead. I think it has to be Eternatus lead. I can't see what else. If I lead Dialga, I'm like vulnerable to the Yveltal, depending on like what kind of Yveltal set it is. I think it's Whimsicott plus the Eternatus right here. In the back, I think it's Dialga plus Umbreon because I think Snarl pressure against my opponent's huge. Or Shifu could be really nice here, but I have no idea who the Sash is, so I don't know if it's really that great. Especially against the Veltal, I just get doubled up by like special attacks and I just lose to like Airstream Combination plus anything. But I don't know if that's really the greatest thing for me to really bring here, so that's why I'm going to decide not to bring it here. I think Umbreon could stall out the late game. The Yveltal plus Raichu. Uh, this could be a policy thing. Okay. So I do lead my Whimsicott and my Eternatus right here. I, I think I'll plus uh, Darkness shouldn't KO unless it's Life Orb. And I think it should be okay. My only two problems is if they're going to make that really hard read of protecting the Yveltal and just nuzzle immediately. Or they're going to do something else. I think I have plays for that. I think it's just going for the Dynamax cannon. Just going for the Protect with my... Uh, not Dynamax, my Wombs God. I mean, I could actually. Wait, hold on. Do I outspeed? Do I outspeed the Yveltal? That actually might not be a bad play. I do not outspeed the Yveltal. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> We're not doing that. Okay. Dynamax Cannon here. We're just going to protect then. And then we're going to tail in the next turn. Or Encore, potentially, depending on who they target with the Yveltal. Because I don't think the speed control is really that valuable, really. Like, I think I'm just going to get outsped anyway. They are going to Dynamax the Yveltal here. So this could be a self volt switch into Airstream, which I think is fine if they uh, take a knockout into... I don't know if this Chaos Wombs got to protect. I think it would definitely knock out the Eternatus, though. I think that's all right here. Let's just see what they decide to go for here because it's a risk regardless. I am going to protect the Wimscott here, and I can't really protect both because I just get punished by anything else. They do go for the Fake on the Wimscott, which is really nice. Okay, that's a really good start. And I do get a huge Dynamax Cannon off into the Veltal right here. We get to find out if it's a Soul Vest, which is really nice here by the damage. So this Dynamax Cannon going to be firing off hard into this Veltal here, doing really good amounts of damage. Yeah, that's not a Soul Vest. Okay, that's beautiful damage though. Life Orb taken, and they do go for an Airstream, assisting the Wimps got two. Uh, really good, really good. Okay. Really good. Okay. That's really solid here. At uh, this upcoming turn, I kind of want to Encore the Raichu here. I feel like Tailwind plus a... Nuz, I mean, not tail, tailwind plus dynamax can is just such a easy play, and yeah, they did reveal that they are the uh simple life orb set. Okay, so I think what I want to do here is I want a dynamax cannon, and I think I want to go for an encore here. Now, the reason I want to go for this is because they went for fake out the last turn. I think the encore prevents the nuzzle, which is really nice, as well as this covers for the protect nuzzle. And if it doesn't, in the worst case, as long as it turns to survive to hit, I get the KO on the Yveltal, it's not that bad of a position. I think I'm gonna risk it here. Because I feel like just Tailwind and attacking is super safe. And yeah, exactly. They went for the max guard. Perfect. Okay. So I am able to get the Encore off. I felt like the Nuzzle made the most sense to me. And now next turn, I can go for that Tailwind KOD Veltal. I should outspeed with the Tailwind. Okay, beautiful. All right, that's such a huge advantage here. All they got really was just damage into my Wim's got realistically and some life or chip on my Eternatus. I'm in a fantastic spot here. I can go for the Dynamax Cannon into the Veltal. I can go for the Tailwind. And then afterward, it's looking like smooth sailing from here. So... 
really really strong two turns right there i felt like i got the best read in both cases i think they really want to deny tailwind for the other slots they're going to switch out the right tree, which makes a lot of sense because the right tree, of course locked into fake out can't do anything they're going to bring out the tornadus uh are they praying for a double max cut oh they actually swap out the evil tall interesting so kyogre has to be switched here it does not take this well i will tell you that much it does not take this well it is going to be yeah oh guard of war oh they didn't bring Kyogre. All right. So they did bring the threat right here, which makes a lot of sense because God of War is actually a big, massive threat to my team. Okay. Uh, they can't Dynamax anymore, though. All right. So I kind of like the idea of going for a Sludge Bomb and a Dazzling Gleam. I kind of want to target the Torn Slot here because I don't know if God of War protects. I think one of the worst cases would be them going for... Well, actually, no. I don't care if they protect, right? Because I just Encore the Falling Turn. Yeah. I'm going to Sludge Bomb here, and I'm going to go for a Dazzling Gleam here. Because if they Tailwind or Protect, I could just Encore it anyway. Did they trace my Prankster? I guess uh, even if they trace my Prankster, it's fine, right? It doesn't change anything. But yeah, I'm just going to Sludge Bomb Dazzling Gleam. Uh, they're going to retreat to Gardevoir, which makes sense. They're sacking uh, the Yveltal or Raichu. Okay, that makes sense here. Okay. I like that play because they get Tailwind up. Uh, they're going for Icy Wind, I think. Okay, that makes sense too. All right, so I get a Sludge Bomb off into the Raichu. Reveals that it is going to be the Focus Sash on Raichu. I'm able to get a Dazzling Gleam off into both. And I, I really like this play. Although I think I have a play that covers the following. So Dazzling Gleam is going to KO the Raichu and get the chip on the Torn, which is really nice here. They're going to go for the Icy Wind. Not too surprising that they have it. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. But I can Encore the Torn, I believe. Wait, hold on. Torn hits 170... 179 max if i'm not mistaken yeah 179 max gengar and base 110s are 180 torn uh not one <laughs> uh 178 max so yeah it has to be 179 and then my whimsicott is icy winded so it's like whatever oh boy wait hold on hold on how fast is my whims here did i mess this up 140 technically so it's like 0.67 of that which is like that's around like what we'll hit the 90s or something something 90s and then we have tailwind so we should be faster than torn still okay i went to tailwind up even at minus one speed i think i just go for the dynamax cannon into the torn here and i think i go for the encore into torn as well if i'm not mistaken i think this is my best play uh to deny the tailwind if possible and i think it is even if they get the icy wind off i think they need sucker punch on the evelto plus the icy wind I think the Icy Wind becomes priority if I hit it with Encore. They try to go for the other attack, but they go for a Protect with Velton instead. That's beautiful. Okay. Nice. So I am able to get an Encore off. I think this means, though, they do get the priority Icy Wind since they went for a Prankster move. I'm assuming they went for Tailwind. Oh, no. That's not how it works. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I get Dynamax Cannon off in the Torn here. I didn't think Velton was a threat. It's super low at this point. I want to deny their Tailwind if possible. So, yeah, I am able to eliminate the Torn right here, and that should be game at this point. Yeah, I think that should be game at this point. I, I feel really strong about this position. Next turn, I think I just go for Dazzling Gleam and outspeed KO the Veltal and Sludge Bomb the Guard War and finish it off. So, ooh, it turned into some Whimsicott lead, really putting on the pressure. I thought this was going to be bad, but like my couple first few turns were great and I feel like I didn't let up any other position really. So, yeah, this is really nice. Uh, Tailwind is still up for me, right? I didn't mess this up. Yeah, one more turn Tailwind, which is perfect because now I can Sludge Bomb. I can go for Dazzling Gleam. And I guess Sucker Punch could still be an issue, but I think overall, I think it's like way too hard. Yeah. I still had Dynamax. I still had a Dialga in the back. <laughs> what else did I bring in the back? I brought, oh yeah, the Umbreon. Yeah, I did bring the Umbreon, which if I get some Snarls cooking on against my opponent, I feel like it's just really hard to come back from it. I just think Dialga is way too tough to break through, especially with Dynamax. And even then, you might have just lost at that point. I don't know what the Gardevoir set is on that team because I you don't see Gardevoir. I don't think it's Scarf there. But I'm imagining if it was Scarf, I mean, Eternatus outspeeds anyway. So they need a little the combination of like Sucker Punch, KOing the Eternatus, plus the Guard Route speeding. And even then, I do think that Diago just went super hard right there. I don't even think Double Crit from a Guard of War plus a Life Orb Belto could knock out the Diago. I guess maybe if it's Specs, but that means I would just win anyway with how I positioned it. So yeah, it felt really good there. Sneasel, Riolu, Seismitoad, the Veltal, Cinderace, Zacian. What the heck am I facing right here? Well, then again, like, look at my team and, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
what do I want to go here? I actually really like Salamence here, ironically. Salamence actually does do put in some work right here. Oh, is this just Ice Shard stuff from Sneasel? I guess I can't do Salamence lead then, because if Salamence leads, uh, that's actually not great for me. Okay. Hmm. Is it Eternatus lead? I don't really like Eternatus as a lead here. I guess there's some questionable parts about this. Uh, this is just a really strange team that I have no idea, like, how I'm supposed to match it up against i guess i kind of want to try to turn it to weave up uh ah uh, this is this is actually really tricky this is really tricky i'm thinking like no dialga here actually because i don't really like dialga too much i actually think i'm gonna go with the our uh, shifu whimsicott lead here and i think i'm gonna bring out my uh, salamence plus eternatus here uh let's try it out Let's try it out. There's so many different headache possibilities that could go on from this, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what this matchup is. I, I I don't know my team. I don't know my opponent's team. Like, what am I supposed to expect from this matchup? Like, this looks like a really volatile state right here where I feel like we're going to get destroyed by the Sneasel plus the uh, Yveltal combination, uh, which is exactly what my opponent decides to lead. No surprise there. Okay, I have to, I have to do a guessing game now. I think I have to call exactly what the Sneasel is doing this turn. I think it's either Fake Out or Airstream coming up. I don't know who they're targeting, though. I think they target down probably my Whimsicott, but... Oh, uh, if they have Faint or do something crazy, it's not great here. But I'm going to attempt the Surging Strikes, I think, and I'm going to protect. I think I just have to take the Gamble right here. Because if I don't take the Gamble, I just lose. <laughs> I think that's the case. I'm just going to go for the Protect, and I'm going to go for the Surging Strikes right here. I got to hope that they don't Fake Out double up my Rashifu. If they just Fake Out their Rashifu and Airstream, I'm probably still in this. But it's really, really rough against a plus two Yveltal, which... Realistically, probably destroys my team at this point, too. Yveltal is such a threat to this team as well. It just does so much damage, especially if this is the policy one. But yeah, I am going to gamble here because if they don't go for Fake Out, that means they're susceptible to, like, the Tailwind plus Searching Strikes, but they could go for the Self Ice Shard immediately. I just don't know. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. We're going to see the Yveltal Dynamax, which is not too surprising. If this is just fake out into Whimsicott and Airstream and Urshivu, that's pretty acceptable. I think like this is probably my best mid-ground play. It doesn't cover everything, but it covers a lot of the possibilities that could happen this turn when we protect the Whimsicott here. As we're going to see a uh, fake out. Okay, don't double the Urshivu. Don't double the Airstream to Whimsicott. Uh, okay. That's perfectly good. Okay. So I KO this Sneasel here. And if I get rid of Sneasel, that means they can self ice shard themselves. That's really good here. Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Uh, it's, oh, it's life of It wasn't policy. Okay. I guess I didn't have to worry about that then. Oh, wait. I guess I technically did have to worry about that because they would ice shard this turn. But I mean, this is pretty good for me here. I just certain strikes here, right? They don't have a swap. They don't have a swap unless Seismitoad has anything. And I guess I just go for... Do I Tailwind or do I Encore? I guess I just Tailwind. Yeah, I Tailwind here. I 100% Tailwind. So I Tailwind here. And KO the Sneasel right here. So they're going to retreat Sneasel, which makes sense. Because they do want the Fake Out Pressure for later. They're going to bring out their... Is that actually Water Absorb? Is that actually Water Absorb? I thought it was Swiss Swim. Oh man, it was actually water absorb size with toad. Okay, I was hoping it wouldn't be, but the airstream and the okay, that's still not too bad realistically. Okay. Okay, it hasn't gotten super great here. Wait, my salamence is not jolly, is it? Oh no, it's not. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna need some uh, pretty extreme luck here uh we're going into our salamence right here oh boy this diesel also has ice shard this is really not good but i am forced to dynamax here i think my salamence i don't think there's another play here i do get intimidated on these pokemon which i don't know if they're even physical or special <laughs> i'm gonna get rolled over aren't i uh let's detect here on the potential airstream and let's go for a air uh an airstream ourselves into the a size of a tote slot because uh we because the Di Yveltal Dynamax is going to be over Sneasel is just such a big threat it really is such a big threat wait they retreat here okay to Zashin that's an interesting swap here okay I'll take this this is actually pretty good for me okay this is actually pretty good for me what's that 
I guess to get an airstream next to Zacian, but I outspeed with Tailwind plus my own airstream, and I don't think Yveltal can take a knockout into either Pokemon, especially with the detect on the air Shifu this turn. Okay, might have a shot. Dynamax Salamence does come out. Hopefully, Dynamax Salamence can do something to save my matchup right here because this is looking really awful right now, but uh, doable game. I wish I had Max Quake over Fire Fang here because Max Quake would be really nice to hit the, the Zacian right now and not screw me over. Wait, that Yveltal is kind of slow right here. Unless, uh, I thought the Zacian is adamant on this team. All right, Airstream actually does a good amount to the Zacian, actually. Okay. I get a plus one speed on both Pokemon. Actually, wait, who is faster? Airstream comes out. It's probably targeting down my... It does target down my Urshifu. I do survive. That's actually really helpful. I don't know if this is Quick Attack Zacian, though. Oh, there's so many headaches right here. Okay. It didn't get damaged in my Zosh into my Salamence yet, so that's actually pretty nice. The Dynamax is finally over from the Yveltal right here. I need to check some things. Okay, how fast am I with both Pokemon right here? I should be faster than the... I guess I should be faster. Okay, my Salamence is faster. Wait. Oh, I guess they're just modest on the Yveltal. Yeah, they have to be modest on the Yveltal. Okay, so I do outspeed. I guess I could go for Max Knuckle and the Surging Strikes, but I don't know if they have Sucker Punch on the Yveltal either. But I think it's like my best out right now because I kind of need the attack boost. Because if I don't... Like if I Max Flare here... I guess I can Max Flare Close com Combat too. That's not too bad actually. Uh, I guess that's an okay mid ground because if they do have Sucker Punch, it covers for that play. I'll go for it here. Okay. Okay, let's see. Nice. Okay, Max Flare. Should KO. Please tell me. The Airstream did so much. Okay, nice. That's a really good knockout right here. Okay. That's a really good knockout. And then I get huge damage into the Yveltal. And then Turnuses will get an Airstream boost after. Okay, this is not too bad. This is not too bad. Uh, still still winnable. Close combat into the Yveltal. Huge damage into the Yveltal. And then I think I'm doubling up that Sneasel threat because that Sneasel is a massive pain for me. Uh, we're going to see... Oh, they have Talon themselves? Okay, they have a plus three Yveltal on their tail, and there's no way I outspeed right now. Okay. You're going to Sneasel. Wait, am I faster than Sneasel? I am, right? Yeah, I am. I guess I have to call whether they're going to go for fake out into the. I don't think they fake out, though. I think they're just tarting down my Salamence with like triple axle they have. So I think I'm going to Aquagen. I think I'm going to Airstream here. Yeah. I, I don't think they should fake out. If they fake out, I guess it's really bad. But I, it just depends on their moveset because I don't know what the Sneasel is. I know it probably has fake out, but I feel like you would rather just tar down the Salamence Triple Axle and try to punish, if anything. Especially since I'm assuming this is Sash on the Sneasel right here. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I get I could detect it in an Aquage at the following turn. But I really think that they might just be tarring down my Salamence here because it's such a big threat. Nice. Okay, perfect. Aqua Jet. Huge. Okay, blame me with my Mens. Perfect. That does so much. <laughs> Wait, that did so much. Hold on. This is still not over. Okay. Okay. I do get the airstream up into their Sneasel. So Sneasel does go down. So Sneasel, goodbye. Am I losing the Yveltal still regardless? Okay. Mince does get the knockout into the Sneasel. Huge. Oh, maybe I shouldn't win. And no, I need... I think the Max Flare wasn't too bad. I guess my ex knuckle would have put me in a better situation though. Okay, size with toad. I'm not that worried about the size with toad right here. This this uh Yveltal is a threat though. Plus two Salamence and plus three Yveltal. Jeez, okay. Let's go for a close combat. We do hit three protect. We're gonna go for a dragon claw here. Yeah, dragon claw might as well. If they protect, they get hit by the close combat. I gotta help it turn just can clean up the size method, I suppose, in the end game, which is definitely doable right here. Uh depends on Blue Wing probably chaos my mints, and then uh this comes down to what the Yveltal does and how fast is it right here. I am Matt. I can't tell what the speed is because it's not max speed. Is it just modest max speed? It would underspeed my Salamence by the logic. Okay, yeah, they are. Uh, if they target down my Urshifu, no, they target my Mens. My Mens goes down. I need to crit the close combat right here, I think. Okay. All right, Urshifu, you got to crit the close combat, buddy. 
Uh, no crit. Okay. Unless Seismatel went for a really inaccurate move for some reason here. It went for the Ice Punch. If that didn't KO or Shifu at like minus two or three, whatever I am, that would have been hysterical. But yeah, this game is probably over. Unless Eternatus is like the biggest monster in the world right here. I, I have no idea what the size of the total item is. I think I'm just going to Dynamax Cannon hoping that they throw this game because I think it's the only way I have out here. I'm going to Dynamax Cannon the size of the toad and I'm going to go for the... Because I'm hoping that I live two hits from the Eveltal. Like if they mess up in the blue wing and the Dark Pulse doesn't KO me for some reason, then that's a big mess up here. So Dark Pulse, they don't mess up though. Dark Pulse is the right play here. Oh, that's way too much. I think I would have just gone down anyway. Uh, Oh, what did my tip? My tail would probably petered up. Okay. I guess Protect was the better play there, but I think they had like an extra turn of Tailwind, so I don't think it mattered. Yeah, all right. Oh, there were some good things that happened, but also some bad things. I guess the bad thing is I lost my Sash for no reason, but even then, I guess the Sash was important because my opponent didn't even bring it down to it anyway. I guess since I revealed it was on Life Orb, I didn't have to talk to Sneezy so as aggressively there. I really still didn't think it was Water Absorb, but I guess I should have probably prepared for that just in case. I should have just went for a... Uh, maybe a mid-ground was just turning down the Yveltal. Extra damage on Yveltal would have been huge. Still, Blooming Moon was doing so much damage, though. I wonder... I think the one play I did make a mistake, though. Fire Fang. The Max Flare. I guess it ended up being a mistake after all. I think if I went for the Max Knuckle into... Uh, in Max Knuckle into the Yveltal plus 30 strikes, like KO'd a Zacian. They had to respect my Pokemon more, and with that plus one attack, I would have KO'd the Yveltal afterward to close combat or maybe Dragon Claw at that range. So I think in the long term, that was probably the one mistake that I definitely could have fixed because I think that would have allowed me to snowball in a better spot after making all those reads. So yeah, I think just not going for the Max Knuckle was a mistake there. Winnable game, but oh, that was tough. I'm actually surprised we even had a chance in the first place. Reggie Eliki, Kallax, Shadow Rider, Kiram White, Grimmsnarl, Amoongus, Ditto. Oh, wait, actually this is not too bad. I do have Umbreon, which actually kind of messes up their lead, I think, if they want to lead passive. Okay, Umbreon can actually do something with Snarl. Snarl is actually really good here in this matchup. I'd probably go with like Umbreon. Mm, there's a lot of things I could go for here, actually. Like Umbreon's really nice next to Dialga, I think, and start setting up. I think that's actually really strong here. I don't really see a reason not to go for it here. Yeah, I really like that. I like Eternatus and probably the Whimsicott in the back. Or maybe the Urshifu. I could see Urshifu just for close combat and like hitting through the Grimmsnarl is pretty nice. But having another Spore Switch is always really solid here. And even if they transform into me, I guess Tailwind is just better in general. See, so yeah, I'd rather just have Whimsicott for Tailwind safety here. Because uh, they don't have access to Tailwind themselves unless they trace by Whimsicott. Which, uh, if they trace by Whimsicott... Uh, unless I get reverse sweeped with Dazzling Glim, which I think is very unlikely. It's possible, though, because this team doesn't have to fairy resist. But let's see what my opponent decides to go here. I do think that boosting up my Umbreon is like a really big priority here. We're going to see Grimstone and Kallax. Okay, this is fantastic here lead-wise. Okay, I get to lead my Yalga plus my Umbreon. And I think I just go for a Snarl and I go for a Steel Spike right here. I don't see how I get really punished unless this is Trick Grimstone, specifically Eject Button, which uh, that's not really that worrisome. Re well, it is worrisome, but... I don't really have much of another play, do I? I don't really want to play passive against this and give Kallax a potential boost. I think Kallax switches out anyway because uh, the Umbreon is threatening it. So I'm going to go for a Snarl here and a Steel Spike into the Grim Snarl. Boost up my physical defense if that's really good for the Eliki potentially. If it is a physical Eliki here. Uh, let's see what they are going to swap out into for the Kallax. Which I think they are going to swap unless this is like... Oh, Dynamax Grim here. Hey, we see a Dynamax from their side. They're Dynamax and Calyrex. Oh, is this Max Phantasm? Okay, that, that's uh, interesting. They do Dynamax the Calyrex. Phantasm doesn't work, though, into me. If I Steel Spike their, uh, in their Grim Snarl here and get a Snarl off. But I guess if it's Sash, they're doing a lot of damage to Umbreon. If this is a Misty... If this is Draining Kiss, I guess that's a bit of an issue. We'll see if that's the case. Uh, but we are Dynamaxing our Dialga. Please don't be Trick Eject Button. Don't actually be Trick Eject Button. That's not a set on Grimstone anymore. That was really old days. Let's see. Now uh, we do Dynamax both Pokemon here. We're going to see a Thunder Wave. Okay, that's 
As long as we don't get paired here, because if we get paired here, that's actually really annoying if they get the spirit break damage. Okay, they get the phantasm off into the Dialga. Cool, we're able to take it. Please, 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 please. A land snarl, which is huge. B hit through and get the steel spike off. Snarl gonna hit. Nice. Okay, that's one step. But the process, we are able to get a minus one special attack on that Calyrex, which is huge. It can't snowball me as much anymore. Uh, we need the steel spike off. Nice. Okay. We also broke a sash on the Grim Snarl. If it is sash Grim Snarl for some reason, so goodbye Grim Snarl. Beautiful. Okay. Umbreon looking really good here and one of the cool things about like really passive or not passive but like uh teams that don't deal well with Umbreon Dialga plus this Umbreon mode this team has a lot of hyper offensive modes but it also has a defensive mode because of the steel spikes from Dialga as well as max quakes uh, boosting up the Umbreon is just so huge for this team because it's really able to let Umbreon really just do its own thing right here and really make it a nuisance for my opponent's team but I see the Eliki come out and I think I'm just gonna go for a quake here we're gonna go for a quake here and a snarl yes even if they protect it's fine they don't really do much here they could protect they're just gonna t-bolt okay so this is gonna do a decent amount to my umbreon that does a really good amount okay phantasm also into my yoga okay cool if we get the max quake off we're in a really good spot if we don't it's not terrible but it's not great we do land a snarl beautiful so now both of these pokemon have minus one and minus two special attack respectfully here okay the alga the hit through okay it's not too bad all right i think they need to double into my dialga to ko anyway so i go for a max quake here and i go for the moonlight here i'm pretty sure i need the recovery okay doable doable I'll take the spot. The Kalos is minus two anyway, so it's not like a snowballing at minus one against my team at the moment. They go for Thunderbolt into the Umbreon once again. Cool. Uh, that did a bit more than I was expecting. Phantasm double KO's Umbreon here? No, it doesn't. Okay, they tar down my Dialga. Cool. Don't get paired again. I would really like to get this recover off so I can snarl the next turn and be really good against the Kyurem. Actually, do I even need to do that? I could just foul play, right? I could probably just foul play. All right, Moonlight gonna heal the umbreon so umbreon is gonna get back to pretty healthy range here and i would love the plus one special defense increase beautiful okay umbreon's not boosted up so the kirim shouldn't as long as no crits or some kind of bs happens we should be good against the kirim i want to say we're good against the Kirim. please tell me we're good against the kirim all right good bye reggie Aliki. so reggie Aliki does go down here beautiful all right what do you bring out what do you bring out because this is a big moment right here if it's Kiram, it's going to be like freezes or crits that is going to screw me over. We do see the Kiram come out. Okay. I bet just Moonlight stall. I want to scout for a protect here. Uh, is that the case or should I just foul play? No, I think I just roar of time and I foul play. Yeah, I think that's okay. You have to hit Blizzard and get extremely lucky. Yeah. Outside of hail. I have Eternatus and Whimsicott, and I think uh, Eternatus under Tailwind just wins too. So yeah, I'm just going to go for a Steel Beam here into... Or, is Steel Beam correct? Yeah, it has more accuracy than over time. And we go for a Foul Play here. This Foul Play should KO the Calyrex here. We didn't go for Dragons at all. Uh, they went for the Astro Barrage. Perfect. Okay. All right. I think... Uh, well... We can still lose. We can still lose. I'm not celebrating yet until I see the foul play go off in the Calyrex. Okay, they get a boost, so they're at minus one. Blizzard, okay. They do land outside of hail. They didn't crit me, though. Okay. And I did need the max quake boost after all. I do get the foul play off into the Calyrex slot, and it is able to pick up a knockout. Okay, that's that's game sealed then. It was life orb, right, on the Kyurem? I mean, we go out into... I guess we just go out into Whimscott anyway. We do just go out into Whimscott anyway and just click Tailwind. And... It was Life Orb, right? Yeah, it was Life Orb. Okay. So we go for a Tailwind here. And we go for, I guess, the Moonlight anyway. Yeah. 
because we still have Eternatus in the back, so we should just seal up this game. I just want to be, like, safe. <laughs> I really just want to play it safe here, because I don't know. A Moonlight from the Umbreon is going to heal up my Umbreon here, so they have to hit another Blizzard or Draco Meteor here into my Umbreon. This makes it less likely for them to have a chance, and I want the Eternatus in safely, so a Blizzard going to come out. It does double land here. It does kill my Wimscot, but my Umbreon is still healthy, and now Eternatus can Dynamax Cannon into the Curum next to the... Uh, Umbreon. I just wasn't sure if I saw the life orb. I was like pretty sure I saw I saw the life orb, but just to be safe, might as well just bring out the Eternatus now and just click the Dynamax Cannon and finish this game off because we can't miss Dynamax Cannon here. Uh, we already know you're not Bright Powder on the Curum, thankfully. So no shot, you are able to live and we'll be able to heal up our Umbreon if they try to protect stall and the Eternatus is still faster than the Curum after Helwyn is gone. So regardless, have the win here. As Eternatus is going to finish off the Curum. And, ooh, okay. Umbreon really showcasing its worth right here. Being able to boost is really nice here. And this team does have, like, really offensive mods, right? Like, for Eternatus, you have the uh, Expert Bell Dialga, which does really well against a lot of different teams. You have the Urshifu that hits to protect under the Tailwind from Whimsicott. You just have a bit of offense here. And then this uh, Umbreon can really screw down some teams that just don't have the ability to hit it. Especially no Zacian teams, which is fantastic here and yeah we didn't face a Zacian so they just really struggled against Umbreon. Umbreon Snarl lead was just really hard for them to handle. I was able to boost up plus one defense uh plus one special defense. They brought all special attackers anyway so I guess it didn't really matter but like yeah it's just really hard for them to break Umbreon. And that is the show. Double Dragon. Wow. In a format with fairy types, especially Zacian, is so prevalent. And the fact that this team does not have a single fairy is, is whatsoever. Kind of crazy how well it did at Japan Nats. Like, it's absolutely insane. But yeah, if you did enjoy today's video, be sure to leave a like down below. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought about the team because I actually pretty much enjoyed it. I really did like it a lot. I wish we could have faced a bit more sun matchups because I feel like Salamence would have been able to shine against a lot of the sun matchups. Team's just really good for that case. But if you do want to check out the details of the team and the creator, try it out down below in the description and grab the rental code while you can. But check out the rest of my series 12 content where I use a lot of cool teams and a lot of fun Pokemon. That's going to be it for me though. Have a great day, people. And until we bow again, I'll catch y'all later.